Hi, in this clip I'll show you how to customize, compile, and distribute your Android app. In order to do this there are a few prerequisites and you can find them listed here on the mobile development environment topic. You'll see here that you need to have JDK and the Android SDK installed and to create a custom application you need to install certain versions of various items and you install these in the SDK manager. If you installed a later version, you'll open the build.gradle file which is located at RIA modules, Android, source, and app. And in this file you'll change the version numbers in the compile SDK version and build tools version parameters to the version that you installed. It's best to use the versions that appear in the help since these are the versions that Magic checks. The compilation of the Android project is done using the Gradle tool and you need to have internet access at least for the first build in order to download all of the Gradle components. Now before creating your files for deploying your app I'll show you two folders that are important to know about. They're both here in the RIA modules folder under Android, Source, App, SRC, and Main. And the folders are the Assets folder and the RES, which is the Resources folder. Now to, to include custom images for the icons and splash screen, when your app is open you'll save them in the Resource folder. This folder has the default icons and the splash screens in various resolutions and since we want to use custom images we'll make a copy of the resource folder and rename it. We'll just call it my images and what I did was I prepared in advance an icon and a logo with the words my app so that we'll know that these are our custom images. So I'm going to take those two images and copy them into this first folder here drawable HDPI and we'll replace the default images. Now you need to name the images with the same name as the default images. So that's what I did here. And you can see here that this folder has subfolders that support different device resolutions. And you need to do the same thing for all of the resolutions, replacing the various image files, but we'll just do it for the first folder. The files in the RES folder are just the startup logo and icon. And it's a good idea to package the magic app resource files with the app. For example, you can package images used in your app, your color file, and a local database. And this way the files are available to magic when installing the package instead of retrieving them from the server on the first execution. And to package these files, you place them in the assets folder. And this folder should contain subfolders and files in the same exact structure as they are referred to in the magic programs. So for example, for an image defined using the relative path of images slash myimage.png, the assets folder should also contain a subfolder named images, and that should contain the myimage.png file. And that's what you need to do to set up before running the deployment builder. So let's go ahead now and open Magic XPA and we have here a simple rich client program and it has a public name and the external checkbox is checked. So now we're going to open the rich client deployment builder. We'll go to options, interface builder and rich client deployment and just go ahead and click here on next. And let's create a new configuration. Here you have the application title and the name that you set here is the name that end users will see when the app is deployed on their device. So we'll just go ahead here and change it to something like my app and everything else you can leave as is and click next. And so here in the server name field you automatically get the name of the server or you can also put in the IP address which is what I'll do here. There's no need to change anything else here. So let's click next and the application name field is the name of the application as it is known to Magic's web requester so we'll leave it as is. And in the start program name field you want to click here on this button 
and select the public name that you set for your program, mobile program. You actually get a list here of various public names, but we only have the one, so we'll select that. And when deploying on mobile devices, you can have your deployment settings that you filled in as part of your deployment package or in an external file. And we'll have it in an external file that we define here in the external settings file name property. Click Next. And we want to select here Android only because we want to generate deployment files for Android. But remember that you can build a package for multiple deployment platforms by selecting them all here. But here we're going to select Android. Now in this property, the deployment files folder property, you set the folder where all of the result files will be created. And click Next. The deployment folder does not exist. Do you wish to create it? Yes. Now because you selected Android in the previous screen, this Android settings screen appears. So in the SDK folder field, this is the folder where you have your Android SDK installed, and I have it installed on D SDK, so I'll select that. And also, you have to go and get the platform there, and we'll use Android 23 here. This actually is the platform which will be used for the compilation. The package name here is the identifier of the package, so we don't need to do anything here. And here we'll select the My Images folder where we place the customized images for the default icon and splash screen. And here are the properties of the key store which will be used to sign your package. And we'll use a key store that's provided with the Magic installation. But for production you should create your own key store. But right now we'll leave it as is and click Finish. Now the Android app is being compiled and this may take a few minutes. After the build is finished, the summary screen appears with all the information that you need for deploying it. And it's a good idea to copy its text or make a screen capture of the screen so that you can refer back to it and have this information at hand. So here it tells you where your deployment files were created and where you should place them on the deployment server. And here you have the URL that you can use to install the application on the Android devices. When it creates successfully, the build will create two files in the destination folder that you defined. And by default, it is set to the published application folder. In our case, you'll find the files in the published applications folder under a folder with the name of your project and under Android. So you'll have an APK file and a text file. Now the text file, the app name should be the project name and the PRG name should be the public name. And make sure to write the correct IP address and to use the correct magic scripts. If we entered a wrong value and the build failed, you'll get this message here. To see what happened, go to the destination folder and see there's a subfolder named temp build folder. Type in CMD and then run the build.cmd script. And you can look through this and you'll see what error occurred. So for here example, the Java home variable is not set correctly. So you go ahead and fix whatever errors there are and try the build again. The manual build is based on both the execution properties file and the settings properties file. And you want to make sure that both of these files are defined correctly as well. And you can find a list of some of these errors in the mobile troubleshooting section in the help. Now we are going to install the client app on the mobile device. And there are several ways to deploy the application on Android. You can upload your application to the Android market. You can open the app in the Android Studio and run it from there. You can run the APK file on your device. For example, if you get the APK file as an email and click it from there. You can do it over the air by putting the APK file on an exposed folder on the web server or by using the Android Debug Bridge utility. And there's more information as you can see here in the help about this. When it's running you can see that the custom images are appearing here. So now you know how to customize, compile, and distribute your Android app. Thanks and join us again soon for some more magic.